Hey, hey, what is up, guys? It is RBN Hardware with a brand new video. In today's video, I want to show you guys step by step how to put together this $500 PC that you can actually put together right now in 2021. Now building a PC with a dedicated graphics card right now can be a bit tricky due to the ongoing GPU shortage. There is however a solution that lets you build a PC that will be all set up and ready for you when you're able to get a hold of a dedicated graphics card. This is an APU from AMD which has an onboard GPU that is powerful enough to run many games with respectable frame rate. Just take a look at these numbers. Now as can be seen, the built-in GPU is really not that bad to game on. So let's say you decide to pick up one of these APUs, what kind of frame rate or performance can you expect if you then decide to buy a GTX 1660 Super once the GPUs come back in stock? So in today's video, we're gonna look at what kind of frame rate you can expect with the 4-core 3200G and what performance gains you can expect if you decide to add a $230 GTX 1660 Super Graphics Card. In today's video, I'm going to cover all the components I chose, showing you guys step by step how I put together this $500 gaming PC before booting up the system, testing out the gaming performance and if you follow my steps throughout this video, you should be able to see these numbers in your favorite game with this PC. Now I will be detailing several of these games and we're gonna look at that after we completed the PC build. Now all PC components you see in the video are linked up in the video description. So let's go ahead and start with the motherboard. This is one of the best budget B450 motherboards for 3rd gen Ryzen. This is the DS3H from Gigabyte coming in at $69. Now because we're gonna use the onboard GPU, the display output that the motherboard provide is important and Gigabyte has thought of this and as we can see we find both a DVI plus an HDMI output. Now before installing the APU we need to get rid of these two retention clips so yeah let's go ahead and do that first. Alright, so let's take a look at the CPU, or rather, the APU. This is the Ryzen 3 3200G coming in at $179. This is a 4 core thread CPU with a 3.6 GHz base clock and a boost clock of 4 GHz. In terms of raw CPU performance, we see that the $179 processor is keeping up well versus the competition. But yeah, let's take a look at the built-in GPU performance also. Here we're looking at Call of Duty Warzone running in 1080p low settings with red scaling set to 67%. This is resulting in about 50 FPS on average using the onboard GPU which is very impressive numbers knowing that we're running on the onboard uh, Vega 8 GPU sitting inside the APU. With that said guys, let's look at a few more titles. CSGO is another popular game running in 1080p with competitive settings. This gives us an average of well over 130 FPS, whereas in 720p, you're gonna see frame rates over 200 FPS on average. Let's take a look at Division 2, and here we see an almost 50 FPS in 1080p. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you can expect almost 60 FPS in 720p and about 35 FPS in 1080p. Grand Theft Auto V also runs great on the 3200G and here you can expect 70 FPS at 1080p and almost 100 FPS at 720. Fortnite also runs great as can be seen. Apex Legend, however, is a little bit more demanding as can be seen, but if you're willing to run the game at 720p, you're gonna be fine here, however, at 1080p, yeah, you might have to do some overclocking. 
Any way to install the CPU, all we need to do is to line up this triangle located at the lower left side of the CPU with this triangle on the motherboard socket. Pull back the retention arm, line up the triangles and simply drop the CPU in the socket before you return the arm back down again. Now a cooler is included with the Ryzen 3 3200G that is good enough even for some overclocking with this PC build. However, if you do want to spend a few dollars on an aftermarket cooler, I think that the Esports 34 Duo from Arctic is a great pick. But yeah guys, for today's build we're gonna use the included stock cooler and the cooler installment is pretty simple. Position the heatsink of the CPU so that the four spring screws align with the screw holes on the back plate. Then carefully tighten the cooler down in a pattern like so until you're feeling resistance. Lastly, don't forget to connect the CPU fan cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. With that done, we can move on to the next component, which is going to be our memory. I highly recommend going with a dual 16GB kit with a rated speed of around 3000 to 3200 MHz. Pretty much any kit will work here guys, you can find my top favorite picks down below. This kit I'm using for today's video is coming from Corsair called Vengeance Pro RGB and they will definitely do the trick for us. But with that said, there are cheaper options out there as well. Now we're almost ready to install our motherboard, but before we do that, let's install our storage as well. This is the A2000 from Kingston with 500 gigs of storage. Now you can basically pick any 500 gig NVMe drive and expect these short and speedy loading times. Now I chose Kingston because they offer great price and performance and they have never let me down. With that said, you can also go with an SSD if you want to and you can save about $10 here and I'm linking up a few great options down below for you guys. So take off the screw, then slide in the A2000 with a 45 degree angle, just like so, and then go ahead and secure it down. Now picking up a case for a budget PC build is really not that easy. Throughout my PC build videos, I've used cases such as the P300A, the Cooler Monster MB320 as well as the Citadel Mesh RGB from Colink and all of these are great budget cases and they will all work great for today's PC build. But with that said guys, for today's build I decided to go with Lian Lee's latest add to their Long Cool family. This is the Long Cool 215, a $90 mid tower with two massive ARGB fans but we also find a smaller one at the rear. Now the two fans at the front can be addressed and customized to your liking via the ARGB controller button that we find at the front of the case. And as can be seen the whole front is covered with these small holes. And these holes are creating excellent cooling over our components. And overall guys, lots of space and room for expandability and cooling potential right out of the box. And I gotta be honest here, super super excited over the cooling potential. Now to get access to the interior, simply untie these two thumb screws and then we can remove the tempered glass side window. Don't forget to install the motherboard IO shield and this thing goes in from the inside of the case with these audio ports pointing towards the button and then yeah with that done we can go ahead and secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided by Lee and Lee. When it comes to the power supply, a couple of things to have in mind. Now since we're dealing with electricity here, which yeah, if we are unlucky, can cause severe damage to our components, I recommend not shipping out on the PSU, but rather stick to recognizing brands such as VGA, Corsair and Cooler Monster to name a few. Now this here is the Corsair CV550 unit with 80 plus bronze certification. Now I have used this PSU in many of my past PC builds. 
It is a quality and reliable unit that doesn't break the bank. Make sure that the fan is facing downwards, then gently slide it into place and secure it. Now we're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics. And first up we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to the right hand side of the motherboard. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Lastly, the case also needs a SATA power connector to feed power to the ARGB controller. Now it is finally time to install our graphics and although you will be perfectly fine with the onboard Vega 8 graphics that we find in our APU, in most cases it won't let you run your favorite game with anything higher than low settings. And so let's say hypothetically that GPUs finally come back in stock and you decide to pull the trigger on a GTX 1660 Super, well that would turn this PC into a 1080p and 1440p monster. Now let's take a look at Call of Duty Warzone. As we can see the integrated GPU is able to output an average frame rate of 50 FPS at 1080p low settings. Now upgrading the PC to a GTX 1660 Super you can enjoy a 130% increase in FPS going from 50 FPS on average to 115 FPS at 1080p. Now taking a look at the raw gaming performance, we can see that the 3200G and the GTX 1660 Super GPU work really great together. I decided to run 18 games in both 1080p high settings and 1440p at medium settings. And yeah, as can be seen guys, you can expect 50 to 60 FPS in most games. But yeah, with that said, let's take a deeper look at some of the games tested. First up we have Biomutant, and again, as can be seen guys, I am picking high graphics settings here. Starting at 1080p, we're getting 89 FPS, and at 1% low, we're seeing 75 FPS. At 1440p resolution, at medium settings, results in an average of 67 FPS. Let's move on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let's have a look at 1080p where I'm selecting high to medium graphics and this has given us an average frame rate of 48 FPS with 1% low at 37 FPS. Bumping the resolution to 1440p results in 43 FPS. Looking at the settings you guys can see that I'm selecting medium settings here. Moving on to Days Gone, at 1080p high settings you can expect 69 FPS with 40 FPS at 1% low. At 1440p medium settings we're sitting at 62 FPS. Next up we have Death Stranding starting at 1080p high settings with Fidelity FX cast turned on. And with these settings we're able to get 95 FPS, whereas in 1440p we saw 73 FPS on average using medium settings. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another popular and demanding game that I've seen a couple of you guys been suggesting starting at 1080p and here I'm selecting fairly high settings overall and this has given us 49 FPS. At 1440p however, we have to lower the settings quite significantly in order to get an average of 58 FPS. Last up we have Control which is yet another quite demanding game actually. Here at 1080p medium settings you can expect 64 FPS. Whereas in 1440p low settings, 59 FPS is what you can expect. Now again guys, all PC components we just looked at can be found down in the video description. We also now have an official Discord server for the channel and if you want to become a part of the community, share your PC build or ask questions either to me or any of the awesome people on the channel, you definitely want to go ahead and join the Discord server today. Link can be found down below. In the meantime, watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.